So, good evening, everybody. Uh, as Sir says, my name is uh, Kartik Chandra Mondal. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Information Technology, Jadavpur University. Today, uh, in this uh, particular session, I will explain mainly about the categorical data, different perspective of categorical data, types, natures of the categorical data, along with some example in Python. And uh, we'll cover most of the thing of tomorrow's lecture and uh, today's lecture in a very brief manner but in uh, tomorrow's lecture i will mainly explain about association chi square test and the fit for uh, test all these things in detail uh, along with more detailed explanations more detailed examples so let's start the session let me share the screen So as you have, uh, as I have seen in your in your schedule of lectures or the program schedule, what I have seen is that you have already uh, practiced and worked with Python. I don't know whether uh, <clears throat> visualization of uh, using Python is already covered or not. Uh, in today's lecture, I will mainly work with visualization and data handling. So if you have any problem, please let me know. If uh, the thing al is already prepared, I will explain. If not, I will note it down and I, I have another session to clarify. I will clarify all those questions and queries in the next session. So do not hesitate to ask uh, whatever the questions you have because the, the um, diversity of the audience is very huge. So I will, uh, I will request everybody to do not hesitate to ask. Maybe some of you uh, feel that those part, those things are, these things are maybe very beginning part of the data analysis. So it is not good to ask, but I will request you because uh, the audience is very uh, diverse. So, and I have also seen in your program schedule that you have already worked with cluster analysis, right? And since you have already worked with cluster analysis, uh, I guess that you have some uh, some information about the data and from where those data come from. My screen is visible to everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, all these data come from different sources. So those sources are you know, of different nature and they generate different types of data. And when we talk about different types of data, these types actually depends on the nature of the data. That uh, what are the characteristics of the data you have? And based on that, we classify the data. And based on that classification, we classify the attribute of the data. And in, uh, in our uh, small analysis in uh, daily life, we basically prefer a single table where we, you have a set of rows and set of columns. So a set of columns corresponds to set of attributes and set of rows corresponds to set of objects. And those set of attributes or set of columns may come from different tables or may come from different places and can be combined together. And that is a part of pre-processing, data pre-processing. Uh, if you uh, study data pre-processing, then you come uh, to know that how data comes from different sources and combined together to create a single table, which is the basic requirement or the first requirement or, or the primary requirement of data analysis. OK, so all those data, whatever you see, uh, or the nature of the data you see, are basically divided into two type that is quantitative and qualitative quantitative means uh, when you have quantity that means number which you can express with numbers and you can measure measure in uh, in the sense that you can uh, you can uh, you can um, 
do some kind of arithmetics you can do some kind of uh, measurements on that like you can you can uh, uh, you can justify the value measurements you can justify the value in a particular sense like for example length if you say uh, five feet that means you can justify that something is this much of long okay or temperature is uh, say for example 30 degree that means you can justify or you can measure that the current temperature is 30 degrees centigrade or 30 degree per, or some degree of fahrenheit so those are called quantitative data where uh, which you can express with numbers and another type is called qualitative data qualitative data uh, which you uh, basically cannot express with number but you can use number to represent them but the number you use to represent the qualitative data are not exact uh, are don't have exact meaning as per the number system okay like for example smell or for example color so or taste say for example good test bad test average test or so so test something like that smell good smell very bad smell something like this or a color red blue green uh, yellow something uh, uh, color or you, you can express color in this uh, word which you can say that this is the quality of that particular thing or the characteristics of the particular thing or the description like smell a good smell that that describes the smell okay so Basically, in uh, categorical data, we we handle qualitative data. We also handle quantitative data in categorical data set. But in that case, what we have to do, we have to pre-process them again in some sense to make it class categorical. So we will come about this uh, nature and cat uh, types of categorical uh, categorical data. But before that, there is another uh, type or, or another nature of the data are available this is one way of expressing the data another uh, or the nature of expressing the data another nature of the data by which you can express the data that is discrete and continuous like qualitative data as i said they are numbers and quantitative data they are they can be number but don't represent exact number system and discrete data is you have some number but that is in a finite range and in a finite value and I, as i can say uh, as you can see from this example is the zip code okay so uh, you have a continuous values of zip code but you can make a discrete, discrete values of those zip, zip code along with uh, those continuous values as per the requirement if you have and continuous value as i said that there is a continuous range of uh, values in finite range of values which you can use to express some quantity as per the quantitative data. Now, come to categorical data. That I said that prevent qualitative, uh, represent the qualitative attributes. That means uh, the qualitative characteristic, uh, the quality of the particular attributes, the quality, quality of a particular things, you can represent it often describe and don't have natural ordering or num numeric uh, numerical meaning as i said earlier that in case of categorical data you can use numbers but those numbers does not follow the numerical systems or the ordering of the uh, uh, number system like we know that zero is the lowest number and the one two three is the, the increasing order of the number also we can go minus uh, in that case, zero is the highest number compared to minus two, minus five, minus ten, like this. But in case of categorical data, we we can use zero, one, two, five, etc. But the order is not same as the number. Okay, when we have this kind of ordering in the number, and that is also a categorical data, and those kind of data we call it it as ordinal data and other kinds of data are called nominal data we will see very soon about this uh, different examples so for example this kind of categorical data why uh, uh, used in different places in different uh, different times and when we have multiple categorical attributes in a particular data if we do categorical data analysis, then 
we can easily identify or we can easily find the relationship between two attributes. Like, for example, just consider an example of shopping market data set. Okay. Or we, we usually we call it market basket data, where we have customers in uh, in the object and or different attributes in the column. Okay. So different products, say for example. So we can have two products like milk and sugar. And we can have a character attribute one or uh, attribute one where you have different liquid product attribute two where you have different solid product in attribute one you have uh, milk attribute two you have sugar or say bread anything what whatever you can uh, consider so if you want to know that whether any kind of relationship is exists between this uh, attribute one and attribute two that means between the liquid product and the solid product then you can use categorical data analysis. And in this case, we call it association analysis or finding out, finding out the association between two attributes. That whether there is any association exists between attribute one and attribute two or not. Those we'll, uh, we'll see in detail uh, later on. So categorical data can be, uh, we can also represent numerical data into categorical data and categorical data into numerical data. As per the requirement, we do this kind of analysis or we do this kind of conversion or transformation of the data depending on the requirement. Now, if you look at the differences, uh, then you can see that uh, the categorical data has different usage compared to numerical data. Like, for example, uh, when you have uh, different limited values, okay, limited data values, then in that case, numbers is does not give you any significance. So better than better better if you use categorical data. Like when the number of possible values or categories is relatively small or manageable, it's easier to work with categorical data. Okay, so like for example, if you have a uh, defective pro, uh, defective products attribute that whether a product is defective or not. So you can say instead of uh, that 0.1% defective, 2.2% defective, or 5% defective, or 50% defective, you can say is a low defective product, medium defective product, high defective product. That's in the, this way you can uh, convert the numerical data and you can use in a better way, in a better sense when you are, when you are talking about categorical data. And Numerical data is also has its own advantages compared to uh, categorical data. If you uh, do, if you want to do any mathematical operation which is not possible in categorical data, then you have to use math, uh, numerical data, which you uh, like. For example, uh, the temperature. Okay, when we are talking about our daily temperature, which is ranging from uh, say, for example, zero degree to forty degree. Then it is uh, well enough to uh, and our feelings is we can we can convert it into discrete values, but when we are doing some experiment, in that case, if you convert uh, the temperature data into categorical values, then it will not give you enough meaningful information. So in that case, what is uh, what you have to do? You have to use numerical data instead of categorical data. And there are many other usages you have. So if you uh, work in this domain, slowly you will come to know that when you have to use numerical data and when you have to use categorical data. So whether you will categorical or numerical, that depends on different facts, as I said. So a combination of both types may be necessary to fully represent the data and extract meaningful insight. So that means in some cases, Use, uh, uh, using categorical and numerical data together to do analysis is uh, can give you better result, can give you better um, better insight about, uh, of the analy analysis. So uh, the analyst prefer to use any one of this, but when you want more insight, more accurate result of something, then combination of numerical and categorical data can also be used to do some kind of analysis. And this kind of categorical data mainly uh, are, are, are taking le less amount of time and memory compared to the numerical uh, continuous numerical data. So 
as per the resource requirement this categorical data is also helpful to do analysis now as uh, uh, at some point of time i said the in the, uh, that association between two data that means if i say that attribute one is related to attribute two that means they are dependent with each other you can see some kind of dependency between attribute one and attribute two and if you don't find any association between attribute one and attribute two then they are called independence of these two attributes so that is the that the concept is called independence of categorical data where we have different approaches like for example in a survey you might want to determine if there is an association between gender and the preferences of a certain product or a gender and the percentage of voting uh, uh, voting uh, done in a particular election so if you want to do if you want to find out any kind any such information or any such association between any two attribute maybe in case of in this case gender and the product or gender or the percentage of voting then we use this concept a statistical concept that is called independence of categorical data and in this case we have different uh, different techniques to identify uh, that whether two attributes are independent or not one such is called the contingency table which we will see today or expected frequency which is based on the contingency table and there is hypothesis testing degree of freedom interpretation of that p values from the degree of freedom and there are many other measures are available which you can use to find out whether two values are or two attributes sorry two attributes are independent or two values are dependent on each other okay and so till now what we came to know that uh, what is categorical data what are the different nature of the data why we use categorical data compared to the uh, numerical data and what are the measures are available to to find out the independence of two attribute whether two attributes are independent or not now when we are talking every time we are saying attributes and uh, categorical attributes or categorical uh, values when we represent attributes which uh, uh, using a for categorical data those attributes are come into two types nominal data and ordinal data these two name i have an ordinal data i have uh, once i have mentioned in this uh, previously so nominal data is that is where you have some name like for example colors where you have red blue green or gender male female uh, or non binary or fruit for example apple banana orange marital status single married divorce kind of things okay so if uh, if you look at this uh, values they are of discrete type okay they are uh, they are having discrete uh, discrete uh, names and these name can be of limited numbers and when you have some set some sort of unlimited number in this case for a particular color if you look at the color values then you can say that the color values can range from uh, from uh, thousand in different thousand different varieties so what to do in that those cases we will see very soon and uh, by using uh, those techniques are called uh, encoding where we will see how or or, uh, or when we need Uh, to convert a this categorical data into another categorical attribute or categorical attribute in another categorical attribute so those are different aspects so here we are talking about nominal data and in this case you cannot perform mathematical operation because you cannot do uh, addition subtraction between these values but if you consider red as 1 blue as 2 green as 3 then you can do mathematical operation but those operations are not justified the result of those operations are not justified as per the number system or as per the category present in this particular attribute okay so be careful when you are uh, when you are representing a nominal values into a numbers by using some number system okay so that is called nominal values where you have these these examples i will come very soon with a uh, practical example of this 
but before this let's look at the ordinal data ordinal data means it is same as this nominal data where you have numbers uh, where you have names but this name when you have a particular uh, when this name follow a particular order then you call those categorical attribute as nominal attribute oh, sorry ordinal attribute like for example in case of educational level you uh, your higher school bachelor degree or high school degree bachelor degree master degree so they are they they are having some order high school is the lowest one bachelor is the next one master is the next one like this or customer satisfaction survey in this case if you rate the customer satisfaction then you uh, call them very satisfied not satisfied unsatisfied like this you can assign some uh, some name but those name have a particular order that you uh, that very satisfied is at the top unsatisfied or very unsatisfied is at the top bottom like this or income bracket low income group middle income group high income group like this when you are talking about uh, the order we call it ordinal data now understanding the measurement scale of a categorical data is very much essential and this measurement scale can be except this nominal and ordinal we have interval and ratio ordinal and nominal measurement scale is same as the concept i have explained earlier like this nominal and ordinal here but in case of interval value or interval scale if you look at this then you can see that if you just consider an example that the temperature Zero degree temperature does not mean that there is no temperature. Zero degree is also having some uh, temperature sense when you are talking about our temperature. So when we have different categorical, uh, we use for categorical data where interval between categories are equal and meaningful. Okay, and not true zero point exists so that means there is no true zero point exists where where you can say that there is no uh, there is nothing like in case of uh, other number system zero means there is nothing but in case of a temperature zero means there is a some temperature okay so in those cases we what we use the interval interval scale but they are basically the cat uh, the, uh, the the numerical numbers you can convert them into categorical values into, into by using different process and you can do mathematical operations like addition and subtraction but cannot calculate meaningful ratio and when you do or when you can do multi, this meaningful ratio calculate meaningful ratio that is called ratio scale for example age income all these things where you can completely perform mathematical operations and have a true zero point like zero income that means there is no income age is zero that means no either age is missing or you don't know the age or the person does not exist kind of things you can say so this is the difference between uh, these are the different measurement scale compare uh, except nominal and ordinal but in today's class we will mainly work with nominal and ordinal so before going into much detail on that let's look at the look at some example okay let's look at some examples on categorical data so uh, just for some example uh, from from the audience uh, in the last few classes have you used this google uh, google collab or you have used in your own system if anybody can reply that uh, on the, on those session you have used google collab or you have used your own system uh, python uh, python installation in your own system in our own system okay so today we will see uh, if you don't want to uh, handle the complexity of python installation of different packages python installation is a very straightforward okay but uh, the, those standalone system which you uh, normally use or which we normally use uh, those uh, those comes with very 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 limited uh, features but in, uh, in by google uh, google provides a service that is called google collaboratory where you can write python code 
online and you can prepare a nice documentation in a notebook fashion like maybe you have used jupyter notebook or i don't know exactly if you have used jupyter notebook then google collab is similar like jupyter notebook but it works in a google uh, cloud environment and you don't have to bother about the setup and the requirement of hardware resources okay so where you can find it just go into your google search and type google collab okay and you can press enter and you can uh, get some uh, google collab link or what you can do you can go to this new and go to this more here you can find google collaboratory okay if you click on this google collaboratory or by any other mean by searching in google page or uh, by using the process i have shown you this will maybe motivate you to work on python because in some cases you need to install python and you are very uh, confused that whether uh, which kind of um, id you are you you will use or you are going to use which is comfortable which is not better to go for google collab and it will solve your problem and in google collab it's very uh, in a very short introduction that uh, when you try to run something i first you have to connect it if you don't connect you can directly click this button and it will automatically connect here okay so it will automatically connect to the python environment provided by google and you can write any python code like for example print hello and just click this it will first connect it will allocate the resources after connecting when the connecting is successful it will allocate some resources and then you can see the amount of resources allocated to this uh, to this uh, this to this uh, runtime and you can see uh, that sir, sir, uh, i was doing along with you uh, i just went to that dry portion and then we have to go to my my new that plus four yeah so and thank then, you uh, i will request everybody to follow or side by side create uh, divide your desktop into two portion which will help you to follow and in case you miss please let me know like this okay thank you so you go to new mm. if you frequently use them you can find it here but if you don't find it you go there and if you mm. even don't find it here it's not an issue it's present here no sir yeah so connect more app click on this connect more app okay and there you can find collab okay and click it so collaborate where did you show collab sorry sorry show it once again where you uh, where yeah. you checked it yeah. so again go to new uh -huh. go to more if you don't find it here go to more and if you don't uh, don't find it even here also go to connect more app mm. okay? okay connect more app and then here you search a particular app okay you click it and then you can see this one you open it so it is it says it is installed in your case maybe it is not installed so you have to install it and then you have to click this launch and another better way if you don't find if you don't follow uh, like uh, cannot follow this process simply go to this google search type Google Collab. Press Enter, and see there is Welcome to Collaboratory. If you click this, any one of these, this one, this one, or this one, okay. If you click this, the default uh, account, okay, default account which is open till uh, currently in your browser, that account will be accessed to open the Collab file. 
okay but here you have many content but in uh, the process i have shown you and you can use new notebook like this now please follow and open a notebook and if you have any issue anybody please let me know any of the procedure you just open it and when you follow this process, but where is it getting saved i'm not aware of that so where yeah, does it get well, so installed i i i did the same thing and it is showing uninstall also that means it got saved where right mm -hmm. so where do i find it that so okay uh, okay better you go to google uh, google uh, google search engine the google search page type collab google collab no, and sir, it got saved. I mean, it got installed because it is showing uninstalled in my that thing. When no, I no, click... no. Go to a blank tab like this. Okay. 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 And here you type Google Collab. Okay. And press yes. enter. So this is yes. the uh, this is another way, uh, easiest way. But in, yes. if you have multiple account uh, opened in your computer or in, in your browser, then the default account will be used to open this collab file. But the way I have shown you here, in mm. that case, a particular account will be used to open mm. your collab file. That's the difference, except that all are easy process to open a collab account. Oh, why collab does it get saved? Does it give in the like sometimes when we uh, install uh, app or software, it we just uh, pin it to the tax bar or keep it as a shortcut icon, no? like our software. No, that is, this installation is not your computer installation, software installation. This is browser installation in your Google account. So every time you have to do that, sir. Like no, every no. time. Have... One time for this particular account, for the for this particular Gmail account, you have to do only one time. Okay. Okay. Like for example, I have used only one time at the beginning, and now I can use as many times as uh, as you frequently use it. It will automatically come to these places or this place. Okay. Oh, Sorry. So it will show in that uh, options that you are showing me. It's showing, it's showing now. Uh, it's I'm not showing now. I have to check, sir. It's showing install in my this thing, but I am not finding it very to. Oh, no, just click it. Click it. Click on this. I cl clicked it. But still not opening. No, sir. Okay. In that case, you please go to your Google search page like this, type it here, and then open this. Yeah, I click that. Open notebook, it is coming. That from welcome to collaboratory and open notebook. Now, if you use this way of opening Google Collab, there is a one uh, another issue that where you will find this one in which folder or in which uh, drive. The drive yes. is the account associated with this that I said. But the Folder every whenever you create a new first collab account collab page whenever you create a first Google collab page a collab notebook folder marking with yellow color will open. Okay, you don't have to create it; it will automatically create. Okay, like this one, you will see one collab net notebook folder. Go inside this notebook and you will find your collab notebook. Oh, acha, acha. Okay. So if you follow, again I said, if you follow the this way by using Google search engine way to open the Google Collab, go there and search it, or go go to that particular folder and find your file. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Now let's continue with the example which I was mentioning so uh may I switch up the video if you don't uh, mind because maybe the audio is interrupting in some cases okay if you have any issue you can please let me know i will switch it on okay so now going to this and bef before writing any code you can just connect it here you can click this connect and it will it, it will take some time to connect it based on uh, your internet connection speed and then 
you type and in this case you have two box like see code and text code plus text plus code plus text like the uh, usual notebook you have used there are text cell and code cell so code cell is used for code coding purpose text cell is used for text uh, text representation or better documentation like for example if i use this and if i write uh, say my first categorical data example my first categorical data example and you click outside or you click a code cell you can see it here and then you can see the content of this here in this place you can see the content in the right hand side sorry left hand side left hand corner top corner you can find it here okay so sir, can you show it again sir this portion can you show it again can yeah. you show it again this portion okay, yes so for this uh, collab file as i said this is similar to any notebook like jupyter notebook or any python notebook you have used maybe you have used earlier if you have not used don't worry it is very simple there are two boxes are available one is code box another one is text box or code cell or text cell code cell is used to write the python code and text cell is used to write your document okay a long list of uh, a long li uh, long uh, text can be written in this text cell and a long a lengthy code can also be written in this a single code cell okay and you can also write a single line of statement in a single code cell like for example you can so my hi currently highlighting text uh, code cell is here now if i click a code cell it will come here <coughs> after that code cell and if i click a text cell it will come it will create another text cell after the highlighted text cell okay now if i want any text cell or code cell between these two okay so what i have to do i have to go there and then click here am i like uh, like uh, it is acceptable to you or i will go a little bit much slower no no sir it's okay yeah. i got it thank you now if you don't want to do like this you directly like for example i want to create a one one cell between these two cells so what i will do i will move my mouse the middle of the page okay so if you go uh, uh, if you zoom out then this is the middle of the window this window and there you will see a code cell and text cell if you click one one text cell will be created if you click one code cell code cell will be created here okay so this is the way you can create code cell and text cell <coughs> and if you can go you can move up and move down this code cell like this how you can get this you just click the cell any cell and you can find this cell you can delete one and you can move up and down okay for the code cell you can write any code as i said the, any python code and then you click this run button this triangle symbol here this one okay and you can see the output below the code cell now if you don't want to see it close it it will leave, go again you run it it will again come here okay so this is the way you can create your uh, output uh, cell this is called output cell this is called cell this is output cell this is the text cell or this is the text cell now for the text cell you can write simple text like this is an online workshop you leave it it will the text will be written here now to know better about this uh, text cell editing there is this is called markup uh, uh language so there are uh, like html or many other uh, if you know latex then these these things are similar to those languages okay like for example if you give hash this will come so also these are not part of categorical attribute but since you don't know uh this uh, window i am 
giving little bit of introduction about this. Okay, so if you have any query till now, you can ask me or I will go to create one categorical data. Okay, so what you have to do, uh, considering that you have used Py, uh, Pandas and uh, NumPy, so what you have to do at first, you have to import that particular package which you want to use. Say I want to use Pandas, so I am importing Pandas and I am giving it a name, nickname, that is PD. Okay, and uh, I will press this button and it will be imported into the library, into this environment. Next time, if you run the same code, you have to again run this import op option. Now, you create another tag code cell and there you create a data. Say, for example, you create a data, a categorical data. Say, for example, a gender. Okay. You create a categorical data that is a gender. Gender. Okay. And giving the name of or the genders of, say, for example, I have five, uh, five rows or five objects. So I am giving it a name. Um, a female, male, male, female, male. Okay. And these are not alphabets. So in this case, what you have to do? You have to encode them with inverted comma. Okay. So this is the, this is, this creates a single attribute. So for which this gender signifies, so I have to create another attribute, right? That is called the name, name. So I'm creating another attribute which belongs to this, or uh, who belongs to this gender, okay? So for example, uh, A, person A, person B, person C, person D, person E, okay? So you have, you have to separate them by using comma and then uh, let's check whether the indentation is proper or not, okay? So now indentation is properly written along with the name and the data. So I will click the run button and the data variable is created along with the name and gender value. This is called a dictionary, okay? Now you have to convert this dictionary into a, you have to convert this dictionary into a data frame, okay? And for the data frame, say for example, DF, and for that you need to use this Panda pack, Panda library, and use data frame. May I know with whether these are covered or not? Anybody? Yeah, this was covered in the previous session, sir. But still, you can go on, sir. It's, yeah. it's, so it's I'm not easy. going into the details, just writing it down and mm -hmm. not explaining in detail. OK? No, it's helpful, sir. It's... If, you, if you have any issue, you can ask me. So I'm just running it. A data frame has been created. Now what I will do, I will write print df. So the data frame or the data will be created where you have row number 024 and the name and the gender. So you have a categorical data where you have gender as a categorical attribute and name is an attribute consisting of different names. Okay. So now if you want to visualize the data. So for visualize, so this is. This data is we will address data as dictionary, no? It should be like it's a dictionary name. If we say what yeah. is it? Name of the variable, dictionary variable is data. So is it a variable or a dictionary, sir? Actually, I'm getting confused between the two. Okay. DF yes. is a variable. Okay, okay. Yeah. I I I got your post query. That is 
uh, in programming, when we try to store any value, okay, we need some location in memory. Understandable? In uh, computer, yes, yes. in computer, when we try to store some value in in computer memory system, we need some storage location, and we give the name of those locations, and those are called variable names. Okay, so data is a name of a variable that is a variable name, and this variable can store different types of the data, like for example, integer, character, dictionary, set. All these are different types of the data, and these data types of the data are stored in different data variables. So here, this data is a variable name. Which is used to store a dictionary the set of uh, set of dictionary values. Is it clear? Yes, sir. A little bit, but still I'm hanging over this thing. So data is also variable. DS is also variable, but data is used to assign some dictionary value, money data set, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And DF okay. is a variable which is used to store the data frame. Okay, when we click on that portion, it also, it also shows what is it actually, right? Yes, yes, yes. This is the, this Google Collab is very useful and very user friendly. So you can uh, you can later on you can see see if you want to get any help, you can click on this view and see the data frame. You can see here. So how different is a dictionary from a tuple in that sense then? Okay, so see uh, how far I can remember currently uh, dictionary and the tuple tuple in tuple you don't have key value pair we don't have key value let, let, let me check let me check instead of uh, saying randomly let me check my uh, material just give me a few seconds Because there are four types: dictionary, set, tuple, and uh, another one I forget. Uh, let me check it here. Maybe it is present here. You said dictionary and tuple, right? Yes, sir. Dictionary versus tuple. So, dictionary, I can say that uh, it has key value pair, but uh, let me see the tuple has any key value pair or not. No, tuple does not have any key value pair. Okay, tuple does not have any key value pair in dictionary. So if you look at this, the example which I was showing, here you have this one is the key, and this one is the value. OK? OK, OK. We do not have to put key. We cannot put key uh, words over there, like name and gender and all that. No, 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 no. no. Okay. This is, this Just is the values the we or the objects we want to put in there, not up, right? Sorry? Like only the uh, suppose numbers or objects or characters or strings we can put in a tuple, I guess. Yes, yes. Okay. So in case of tuple, you can have number uh, string together in a same list. Okay, okay. but that okay. is ordered. But uh, the dictionary is not ordered. Okay, and it is immutable also. Means we cannot change the objects once we set something in a 
Yeah, tuple is not tuple is not um, uh, immutable. It is mutable. Yeah. Uh, tuple is immutable. Sorry, tuple is immutable, yeah. but dictionary is mutable. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, you can change values, uh, uh, yeah. and you cannot change values that is mutable and immutable. Okay. 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 So it is. Uh, okay. Anything else? Anybody? If not, then I will continue again with the examples which, uh, which I was showing. So anybody, please let me know whether uh, you are uh, in the previous sessions, this uh, plotting is already explained or not. Little bit of plotting, not in detail, but little bit. You can show it, sir. it will be a revision, sir. Okay. So say, for example, in this case, if I want to get uh, a, 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 a histogram or the bar chart of this. So, like for this is one way of visualizing the categorical attribute. There are other ways of visualizing the categorical attribute. I will come to them very soon, but just with a quick example of this that uh, I want a DF. This is the data frame, and where I have the attribute called gender which I want to count the value, where I want to count the value. So value count, value counts, okay? So this will result a gender count, a gender count, okay? So if I print this, gender count so this is one way of uh, getting the information or statistical information of the data set if you want uh, want to know that how many male and female are there you just write the particular uh, column okay and you if you use this value dot value count method of the data frame then you can get the value count for each of the values of that particular categories each of the values of these categories okay that is called value count method so you can uh, next what you can do you can I, I am writing it separately you can write it in the same uh, code box or you can write also in the different code box so here gender count is uh, I want to plot it so plot plot function of uh, plot function of this data frame okay so you can see that if you move your mouse here it will show you the make uh, some hints that make plot of series or data frame okay option plotting dot backend so you can get more option of this so what are the what are the what are the kind of plots you can do here line plot bar plot uh, horizontal bar plot histogram box plot all these plot you can do here so what i will do what i will write kind is equal say i want bar chart okay so i just press enter and you can see a bar chart is uh, drawn here using male and female with a count of this male and female now to include more properties, so you can do color option. Color option can be since there are uh, two, you can write pink and blue. Okay. Now you run it. So pink and blue. Now you have if you do if you write more if you write more color option, what will happen? Say red okay so what will happen the first it will uh, pick the color from the beginning red for here and p say for example you want to write another one here and that is black so it starts from the beginning and it will choose how many color it will require as per the data values present in the particular categorical variable okay 
now to uh, make this graph more uh, meaningful and more uh, user friendly you can add different title different uh, le uh, the, the levels are the in the uh, different levels in the graph say for example um, for this you need to use uh, i have only used it, imported this panda library now for this you need to use matplotlib library okay so i am using matplotlib library here or importing matplotlib library import matplotlib dot pi plot and giving a nickname as plt you can give any name as if i hope you know it you can uh, give any name of uh, this uh, package instead of typing the big name you can give a short nickname now create the environment of the graph so that the graph will looks better so that is plt dot title okay and here you write gender distribution Next is plt dot x level is the gender. Okay, next is plt dot y level and that is count. And you apply this in the plot. So for this, what do you need? PLT dot so. There is so method under this plot, pipe plot. And see the distribution or, or the environment is given in a nicer manner, but the graph is missing here. So what you have to do, you have to copy this in the same environment. See, it is in a different environment, it is not coming here. So what do you have to do? In this, you can see here male, female, gender count, and the gender distribution title of the graph. So, we hope it is easier for you to understand and to visualize any categorical attribute by using bar plot. So, if you use some other, say, for example, if you move your mouse here, and if you use some other, say, a bar H, okay, let's see whether it Executes properly or not, and see the bar changes, but the level does did not change. So in that case, what you have to do? You have to reverse the value here. Count will be assigned to x, and gender will be assigned uh, gender will be assigned to y. And then if you run it again, you can see the output gender here count here okay so now so this is one uh, type of uh, you can say the nominal variable right a nominal categorical data nominal data in a category uh, nominal categorical data or categorical data in a nominal form now we can, as i said earlier that we can have ordinal data also right so one way uh, one example of this ordinal data can be one way of ordinal data can be the degree. The example, as I said earlier, so what I can do here, I will copy the same piece of code and I will create a text box here. My first ordinal data. Okay. And then I will create one code cell after that. And here, instead of gender, I will write education. OK. And in place of education, I will write high school, uh, say, bachelor, a short is B. I'm not writing full form, master M, PhD P. 
and then another bachelor okay so you run this the data frame is created with the name df now what you can do you you cannot uh, you, you did not mention that this is same currently this is exactly as the numerical nominal data because you have not mentioned hs is higher or phd is higher computer will automatically uh, how it will uh, be understandable by the computer that whether hs is higher or p is higher so for that what you have to do you have to mention the order of the ordinal characteristic uh, ordinal categorical attribute okay so for this what you can do order list okay order list is equal to um, say hs okay uh, b and then you have m and then you have p so this is the order of the degree now what you have to do you have to do you have to use this order list with the uh, you have to apply this you have to apply this where into the data into the data set you have created so what you can do here using this you create education type sorry education type is equal to categorical data categorical data you can see that options are showing so i am choosing categorical d type and here you have the first option you can see the categories any so and then the next next value is order that is false so that is these are the default so you have to write is category like sequence of values and here the sequence of values you have mentioned where you have mentioned in order list right so for example if you look at this see categorical values pd that is the data frame dot categorical data type category is equal to this and order list here i have category i have created a variable for the categories and i will use this order list so categories is equal to order list okay so that order list and then order is equal to as i said by default the order is equal to true sorry false but you have to set it to true okay so it is set here now sir why it is true because by default if you again look at this it says that sorry yeah so it says that categories here type of categorical data with categories and orderness and you can see the default value of this ordered value ordered attribute or ordered parameter is false okay so you can see that order can be boolean none the default is false if you want to set some order value so you make it true so that this ordered category or order list will be applied to your data set is it clear and how you can do this okay. is it clear yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes so that's why it, uh, you, you make it true and then you run it so this order mm -hmm. education type will be created do we need to, yes. do we need to mention this for all the variables and we are creating all the variables you are creating like for example sorry color or something like that color no no where you say this is 
if I do, if I don't do these things, this education data set is same as this color data set or gender data set, where you don't have any preference of or whether a female is number one or male is number one. Okay, because male, female, there is no order here. Who will come for or who whose order is greater than whom? It is not clear here. Similarly, here, if you write only this portion of the data, it is not clear from this portion that whether HS is the higher degree or PhD is the higher degree. So okay? it is only, yeah, only suitable for ordinal data, right? Yeah. To make it ordinal, to make this ordinal new nominal data into ordinal data, you have to follow this process. Okay. Okay. Now it's clear. So if and that that is that will be applicable to all the data all the variables or all the attributes where you want to apply the order. Order, oh, right, right, clear, clear. So if, if you have multiple attributes like name, education, age, and like this, and if you don't apply, want to apply all other category, all the other attributes, you just want to apply order in the education. So education will be an ordinal attribute. Other attributes are the categorical attributes or the nominal at other categorical or nominal attributes or the numerical attributes, whatever it is. You don't want to bother about the, uh, like just the status of those attributes. Then you just apply this process, this set of process, wherever it is suitable or wherever it is required. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. So now this education type is created that who, uh, how the education will be ordered. Now you apply this into the data frame. So into this. So what you can do, you can directly, if you look at the examples, so just type uh, instead of this. I do, I'm not creating another variable. So I have, I'm just creating the data and then creating the order. And then apply uh, apply this into say for example okay okay let it be here apply this into df equal pd dot data frame and then apply this data and then on this df education field only in the education field okay see here you see the name education and gender why the gender is showing here because i have used the same data frame same name of the variable data so it is fetching the previous previous attributes also okay, okay. so i'm applying education now, if I give data one, and no, if I write it, then this education uh, in this case, then there is not a period. Yeah, it will not. So here, the DF will be initialized with the data one. And then in this case, let's see whether it is uh, still fetch the value. Yeah, in this case, it is not showing. So choose a particular attribute where you want to apply this education type and then write DF, that is in the data frame. Education dot AS type, assign type. And which, which will be assigned that education type education okay uh, let me run it why it is not highlighting education type it should highlight the hint but it did not highlight the variable name okay anyway so now if you print this data frame So see, 
now this data frame is same as this data frame you if you look at this here if i create another data frame uh data frame one and remember when you write in notebook the sequence matter okay so these two data frame are same but there is a but this one does not have any order okay but okay. this okay. one you have order yeah, yeah, yeah although they look same but the order definition is not applicable here or did not applied here but here you applied the order information now in this case of uh, ordinal data set if you try to do some kind of statistical analysis then what you can do uh, say just uh, for example i want to do some i want to write some text that is here is the statistical result on the ordinal data okay and see the documentation is written the documentation is created for this next piece of code and i can write something like that print this df i want to use which one i want to use the education field okay so i want to use education field i want to describe this education field so use describe use the describe method okay and whatever it will return i want to print it okay i want to print it so see it says there are five number of rows are available five are five objects are available a b c d e there are four unique values see there are two times bachelor is apply ap appeared so now if i make it little bit longer okay so e f g and just one more h and then here i am writing another bachelor degree another master degree and then another bachelor just to make bachelor more okay so created this again run all these things again okay now so how many rows are there eight rows are there how many unique values same four unique values are there hsb mp top which values has the highest number that is bachelor what is the frequency of this that is four so if you look at the data set one two three and four four times this highest categorical value of this particular attribute is appeared four times the value of this highest occurrences is four so that is a uh, that is one way of getting statistical result and if you want to get the um say, say the mode okay so again write print df dot df uh, sorry education okay uh, and here you want to get the mode of the value zero okay so you get it something like what happened here mm, series object has no attribute values so Value, okay, values. 
Yeah. So B. Okay. So like this way, you can get more statistical result, whatever you want. I will show you uh, many more about this statistical measure in the next class. Uh, like if you want to uh, value count, I have shown you, right? Value count. In the previous here, the value count, which will tell you how many values for each of the uh, values present in that particular attribute and how to create the graph of using that. Now, let's look at the exam uh, little bit uh, theories again, coming to my slide. Uh, so, sir, I had one query. Mm -hmm. Whenever we use this ordinal data, we always have to put this ordered uh, list, something you did. Yes, because that's the, uh, that's the way you, you, uh, you, you, uh, tell the computer that what is the order of that until uh, you don't do this that is as uh, equivalent to the nominal attribute okay. Okay. so we can uh, arrange it in any way we want but uh, we have to give an additional uh, command that this is the order that we i have put now, it say over. for example uh, this one you want to identify you want to mention that bachelor is the lowest one hs is the next masters is the next and phd say maybe phd so just an arbitrary one like this so in this case this will be the order not the way you may you, we understand this will be the order whatever you mention and then the order equals to true will be there in that uh, in that function yes. also is that really applied? Yes. Okay. Because that is not reflected when you are showing us two different data frames. So it was showing the same thing the way it was actually uh, assigned. This right? one or this one? Yeah, the both ones are both one. Yeah. yeah, this 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 is the actual data set. This one and this one is the actual data set. So okay. data set, uh, like for example, this is my name. A is my name and mm -hmm. this is my degree. So mm -hmm. whether HS is the highest degree or lowest degree, that does not mean that my degree will change. Okay. This okay. is the value of this particular attribute. This is just uh, tabulating it and showing it like this is yeah, the this data. Is tabulation of the data, tabulation of the actual data you want to use. Tabular representation. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. But which order it will follow, that you have to mention it here. This may be used in different cases that we will see. That which are uh, like what, like as I said that if you uh, if you have a particular order for, for something that uh, that uh, that smell, that good smell, bad smell, uh, uh, like very bad smell, like this. Okay, so in those cases you have to mention that which is the particular order, because computer in uh, instead of that uh, computer will automatically will not be able to understand what is the order, that which one is good or which one is bad. And how do we run this uh, command then when we will require to uh, arrange it in order of, you know, if you want to see, suppose you did some counting also, no? Count equals no, to no, this. No, counting is different. Counting is different. No, no. I What I was asking is that when, when we put this thing, ordered list equals to when we give our order, this command, uh, when do we need to use it, sir? How do we use it? Okay. That's, that's I said. That there is no relation with this one with this. Okay. That is not showing the frequency, no, sir. Frequency yeah, that, like that, it that, is. That you can do, for example, in this case also. Say, for example, in this case also, you can do that. It has nothing to do with the ordering thing then. Okay. Okay. Fine, sir. Okay. So ordering is required uh, when you need the ordering information in analysis. Okay, we have not got to that part yet. No, we have no, just, no. just okay. mentioned that how you how you uh, apply okay. ordering in a particular attribute. I have not okay. used it yet. Maybe okay. I will use it today, or maybe I will use tomorrow. So if I miss it, I will write it here that I need to okay. apply stat any measure. Right, you that that's you want apply any measure on order. 
mm. information right mm. yes. yeah so that uh, let's see uh, as we will go uh, or or as we will progress we will see whether it is present or not okay anything else let's uh, go to the next theoretical part okay sir okay okay so data encoding as i said the process of converting categorical variable into numerical variable usually we don't we don't don't do that what we do usually is from numerical to categorical but in some cases where you have new categorical data but you have to use some process say for example uh, uh, you you have proposed an algorithm okay you have proposed an algorithm which uses numerical data but you have a categorical data to analyze and you want to use your own algorithm to, for that particular analysis you don't want to use another uh, and any other person's categorical algorithm which uses categorical data or you don't want to propose another algorithm for the categorical data so what you need to do you need to convert the categorical data into numerical data and for that we have data encoding process that means this process will convert any categorical data like this like this this education will be converted into numerical values how that we will see so uh, this process of converting in you know, categorical values into numerical values is called uh, data encoding and uh, from numerical value to the categorical value there are many such approaches are available one such approach is called discretization by using discretization we can like for example the temp temperature we have continuous values of temperature for next th uh, last 30 days and we want to discretize it into uh, hot cold or moderate okay so in this way we can uh, the, we, we will apply discretization approach and we can do uh, or we can convert a numerical value into categorical value but how to convert into categorical value into numerical value for that we have different encoding techniques one such encoding techniques are called level encoding there are other encoding techniques like ordinal one hot binary and target encoding so what are those approaches level encoding ordinal encoding one hot encoding binary encoding and target encoding okay so some of these things will looks like uh, like very much confusing that why you need these and why you don't need, uh, use that because they have slight differences level encoding like when you have nominal data nominal data means like this okay gender male female or unknown or uh, or uh, like uh, some other values okay so in that case you directly give one number any random number you give it okay and then that will be used as a number data uh, or the uh, numerical data okay assign unique integer to each category so here you have male as a category female as a category not known as a category so for example you have assigned zero as a uh, zero for male one for female and two for not known or red uh, one for red uh, two for green five for blue okay unique number for each of the categories it is typically used for nominal value variable where inherent ordering or ranking is not present why because the number you are using here is random and if you use in case of ordering it gives different meaning so when you have nominal data when you have do, when you do not know any order of the categories then apply this technique ordinal encoding when you have ordered data and you apply the same numbering like in that case if you have red as a first preference green as a second preference blue as a next preference then you give red as 0 green as 1 blue as 2 you may small as 0 medium as 1 and large as 2 or you can write vice versa small as 2 medium as 1 large as 0 and your encoding will be like that or your understanding of the data set will be like that okay so when you have ordinal data and you want to convert 
directly into number you use ordinal encoding when you have nominal data and directly want to convert it into uh, nominal number data you use level encoding and then come to one hot encoding one hot encoding converts each category into binary vector that means if you have a color variable with categories red green and blue then this red green and blue will be converted into three different variables three different attributes color red color green color blue i will show you with some example don't worry so this typically used for nominal variable where no ordering is like present and introduce unintended ordinal relationship between category if you have any order like if you have any preference red is a first preference green is next preference blue is next preference in that way if you have any such ordering it avoids this kind of ordering it will not use any this kind any such kind of ordering and it will create three random variable binary variable where you have zero and one as number and then the variable names will be color red or be not variable number attribute names will be color red color green color blue okay next coming to data encoding uh next data encoding is binary encoding so this is looks like binary value variable so it is also one way of converting into binary variable so this one hot encoding is also creates binary feature and this binary encoding also creates binary feature but there is a slight difference, not slight, actually major difference between these two. This one has value 0, 1 for all the three attributes. But this one not necessarily create 3 in this case or 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 value, right? Distinct value 4. So it will not necessarily it will create four attri binary attributes. It may create two, it may create three, it may create four, it may create five, depending on the number of distinct values present in the categorical attribute. So convert the category into binary code by using binary system. Anyone of you uh, like do you know binary encoding system? Binary encoding. Zero, one. Yes, yes. Like how we how we represent five in binary system. Say for example, New York. If we consider New York zero, then rest of the part one. Or else, New York one, rest of the part zero. No, 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 no. It's not like that. It like for example in a binary system. We represent, we have a specific uh, representation system to represent any decimal number into binary number. We follow that system here. Do not, uh, uh, do not worry about this. I will come with some example. Okay. So let's, uh, let's move on and let's go to the next technique that is the target encoding. Where it replaces with the mean of the target variable of each category helps capture the relationship between category and target variable example you have a categorical variable country representing the country of each customer you want to target encode that means you want to use this kind of encoding it based on the purchase rate of for each country okay so based on the purchase rate you want to create some categorical attribute let's look at these techniques one by one okay first start with the level encoding and example of level encoding and here i want to use the same uh same data set Okay, it's not present here. Yeah, I want to create a data set called data attribute called color. 
okay so the data color data color data in a dictionary format it will be like this and here is the color as a key and read green and then blue black say um, another blue okay and here is a mistake the attribute value pair or key value pair will be separated by colon and then make the color data okay um, convert it into convert it into data frame so that is color df is equal to pd dot data frame and use the color data okay any error why okay now what we will use here is level encoder and level encoder is a part of pre-processing package of sk learn pre-processing package or library of sk learn package so i have to import it import sklearn dot it's not showing it's going slowly pre-processing and import which one i will import level encoder level encoder let it come it will not come encoder Okay, so what it is showing? Import. Oh, sorry. Okay. From from import. From this, I will import only this one. Okay. So next one is uh, I will use this level encoder. I will create a pack, create a an object of this level encoder method and apply this LE object to fit transform fit transform and then use df which one instead of df we have color df color df uh, color color data okay and that will be stored in a data frame in the same data frame color df in a new row sorry in a new column and the column name new column name will be encoded color data okay encoded color data so let's uh, print it the sorry print color df or on it 
what error color data so it is color df color data is this dictionary color df is the data frame so i have to use the data frame and i have to create the encoded color so you have a color attribute you have encoded color attribute Another error, color df. Oh, we have used color only. This is the attribute name under color df, and this is the attribute name under color df, the new attribute name. Yeah. So here you have red, black, pink, blue, green, blue, blank, uh, black, blue. And see, it assigned a color name as per the, if you look at this, it, it is sorted. So first B, then G, and uh, sorry, first black, then blue, and then it is green, then it is pink, then it is red. So in an as first it, it sort the color, the attribute values. The values of the color will be sorted and then assign a number from 0 to n, 1 by 1. So what happened here? It sorted the values. First, it comes with blue. Then it comes with, sorry, first comes with black. Then comes with blue. And then the next variable is green. The next variable is uh, pink and then the next one is red and then it assigned one by one red equal black equal to zero blue is equal to one green is equal to two pink is equal to three red is equal to four and then it creates the encoded color wherever you uh, wherever it finds red it will assign or wherever it, find, it finds black, it gives zero. Wherever it finds blue, it assigns one like this. Is it clear? So it's taking the code encoded color on its own. We are not putting in, we are not uh, labeling it, right? No, 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 no. It is sorting the mm -hmm. values of that particular attribute and then assign, uh, assign a sequence of a sequence number from zero to n. Okay, and then so that automatically it is doing on its own. Yes, yes. Maybe okay, give so, the scale. Sorry. When we give the scale and it's automatically created, right? When we give so the values, we are giving the library names. So uh, the library is processing the values and giving the results. Yeah, yeah. The black oh. should be zero. It's this it's level encoder, yeah, this level yes, encoder yeah. is responsible for this. So if I go to this level encoder, go into Google and then search level encoder in Python. Yes. And then go to this. Uh, scale on level encoder. So go to this page. It gives you a detailed encoding for the detailed process that encode target level with values between 0 to n minus 1 classes. So how many classes you have or how many categories you have, how many variables you have or values you have in that particular attribute, 0 to n minus 1, that many of that, uh, values will be assigned to those uh, values one by one. And if you look at this, they have different methods. I have used, uh, where it is, I have used this one, fit transform. So what is this fit transform method? Here, fit level encoder and return encoded level. Okay, so uh, fit encoder, sorry, fit transform, go to this fit transform. 
yeah here fit level encoder with the values or with the variable with the variable and level the encoded uh, or return the encoded levels so y will be accepted with n samples and y will be returned with n samples okay this is the target values and this is the encoded value uh, levels and here is the target uh, here is the target uh, sorry where here is the target variable and here is the so here is the target uh, target variable values this one color is the target values and encoded color is the encoded level this one and this it, it clears going moving forward going to the next uh, next example that is the next type of data encoding that is ordinal encoding okay yes ordinal encoding okay so here what you have to do here for the ordinal encoder you need the same say for example uh, i want to use the same color data okay and i want to then in that case what i have to do i have already created the color data and make the uh, 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 and make this color data variable into a data frame okay that is color df i will apply the ordering so in this case i have to write the mapping so order order map and here you have to write the dictionary that is red my my preference red is my first preference okay so i will use one and then um, say green is my second preference then blue is my third preference and pink is my fourth preference i have to map it right how many five values so red green blue black Yeah, yes, you mean numbers according to our preference, right? Yeah, because uh, in the in case of uh, order encoding, it will be applied to an ordinal categorical variable. That means you already know the category or the order of that categorical variable values. Yes, yes, but uh, here you are using color. It should be nominal. Is it possible to use it for ordinal? Yes. Say for example. Uh, uh, say for example in a data set no no in a data set it, it, it is not possible not usually it is not used but it is also possible say uh, say you are uh, it, there is a data set of a drawing competition okay and the order is given by the organizer for a particular color that which color is a, uh, in which order okay the preference of the color is given as per the order list and this is the order list okay so for example if you create a an image with red uh, color then it will get you will get more uh, weightage you will use black color if you will get less weightage like this it, it, it is clear so how you can convert or how you can think a categorical attribute which is not 
in order but if you want to make it order or there is no conventional ordering is, is available but you can apply an ordinary uh, uh, an order based on the requirement yes now it should be a sense okay yeah 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 you can do the same uh, same operation by using this uh, small medium large uh, values of a particular data set say for example the size uh, of the shoes okay or height of a person kind of things so you, this is the order map and then you use you have to use this order map where in the uh, in the color variable so now you create the color uh, color df color df okay and here i will use uh, level no uh, i don't want to give the same name so What is the process? It is order. Order encoded color. Okay. And then I will use the DF. I will use color DF. Color DF of which attribute color df of color df of color attribute that you want to order uh, that you want to encode okay like this you have used earlier here you are using this one and then you have to apply since you are using map of the order and the values so use the map function and pass the value that is order map order map here we no. need to mention the true or false those things sorry oh, no 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 it is depends on the uh, function definition how the function is defined in that particular library here like look at this map okay okay look at this map mm, the data frame map okay let's search data frame dot map in python or panda so data frame present in panda in data frame you have uh, in panda you have data frame in under data frame you have a map function so look at this apply a function to a data frame element wise element wise it will assign that value one by one okay so these values will be applied here you see there is no such true or false attribute uh, uh, that yeah. parameter is mentioned here. So you don't have to write it it totally depends on the function definition what yes. you have to write inside That's the function sorry what are the function we are using right based yeah. on that we need to use. yes exactly okay so now i will print i will print the color df and see here the number the order encoded color is assigned as per the number mentioned here red assign only one time so it is only one pink assign uh, blue is present how many times blue is present one two three three times right so see blue is equal to three so three is come uh, three is present here three times okay hope this one is clear now i will go to one hot encoding so example of one hot encoding hopefully it is possible to finish within time 
so let's go with the one hot encoding and here i want to do the same this one okay same uh, same color attribute here for one hot encoding so what i have to do i have to use uh, uh, for order in for one hot encoding in panda you have a library that is called get dummy dummy attribute that's why it is called get dummy so i will create a df one hot color df one hot is equal to uh, that panda function name it's not showing maybe, yeah get dummy and then you give first bracket it will show you hints yes so first write the data and the data here is which one you want to use color df variable name color and then next attribute is columns so what is the column name here you have mentioned say color small color okay small c so which column so instead of this color df you mention it here column is equals uh, color and what the attribute will be prefixed with prefix is equal to color so let's see what it will give or what it will generate after that print color df one hot see so color df we have you it, it uses inside this color df what do you have red green blue and black so that color df that column color will be converted into color black color blue color green color pink color red why every time it is coming color because i have mentioned here it is color if you want to give another name you can write any name in this prefix and that will be like for example if you write abc so here it will come abc black abc blue abc green abc pink abc red okay so which column you are using the color column what is the value of this color column the column based on this it will create wherever you have black wherever you have black so where you have black five here one here one so these two are one so wherever you have blue so blue how many times blue is equal to three so three is here so it is here three is here so it is so make it larger so three is here see three is here it is one three is here it is one like Other variables are few, right? Other five colors. variables or five values of that particular attribute. Now, in case if you have a country variable, categorical variable and you have hundred of countries, then how many attributes will be created? Hundred. To avoid this situation, what we have? We have binary encoding. What we have? Binary encoding. Instead of this, if we have 10 values in that, it will require that many, it will create that many attributes. If you have 50, it will create that many attributes. Depending on the number of distinct value present in that particular attribute, 
depending on the number of distinct value present in that particular attribute the number of new encoded attribute depends if you have two value it will need uh, maybe it will use uh, two if you have four it will use three if you have eight if you have four like this so let's see with an example okay so text example of uh, binary encoder okay so for this binary encoder we need to use one special library or special package which you need to install okay so what we have to write to install anything pip install hopefully you know if you don't know then use pip install to install any library or any package in your python uh, installation and then use category encoder category encoder okay so run this let's see what is the error it is showing Mm, category encoder. Could not find a version. Category encoders. Yes, the package name is or uh, category encoders. And then it will install the package and it will show you that successfully install the category encoder package here okay after installing the package you can use this to convert any attribute into binary uh, uh, in, in, into numerical values by using binary encoder so let's code it by using this so you have installed it now you have to use it to use it you have to import it okay installation does not mean you can use it to use it you have to import it so write import category underscore encoder and give a nickname as ce category encoder okay and i will use the same value okay? right same uh, color value so encoder is equals ce that means the package i have imported there you have see you have many things one hot ordinal polynomial quantile encoder you have binary encoder maybe yes binary encoder okay use it and then you need to mention the columns a list of columns to encode so which column you need to encode and here you need to encode which one color so calls is equals color Okay, yeah. So hopefully it will execute properly. Yes. Now run. Uh, now again, similar to this previous method, remember, fit transform this one for level encoder. You have to use the same fit encoder method here also. So you have created this encoder with this column. So encoder dot fit transform the df. Here the df is color underscore df. 
okay and it will be stored into uh, binary encoder so binary color df okay now run this run successfully now you print the binary color encoder so print binary color mdf and run it and see instead of creating five columns new columns it creates how many three new columns that is column zero color g color zero color one color two by these three color values it perfectly encode this seven values seven rows on with this one two three four five values how it now you have to understand the binary encoding system what is binary encoding system let's give you a very brief overview of this okay in binary we use zero to represent zero we use one to represent one but to represent two we use zero one sorry we use one zero why because in binary representation it gives power of two so here you one uh, two to this is two to the power zero that is zero two to the power one that is two that is it will give you two the sum of these two it will give you two now again in binary encoding for three so what you need one and one so this is the first one for this one is for one and this one is for two so two plus one is equal to so it will give two plus one is equal to three and this one will be two plus zero is equal to two and here it will be zero so zero plus one and here it will be zero so zero plus zero is equal to zero is equal to one so binary system works like this way so how many values you have here you have five values so three is not enough so for that you have to continue for four and then for five so for four you have to again use one zero zero okay so what it will power of two so that means four plus g, uh, zero plus zero that means four five means four sorry one zero one so that means equal to four plus zero plus one that means equal to five but remember five is not here enough here why because zero 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 this one so in this case what it will be zero zero because two two values are not enough so you have three values so because you have five so and since you cannot use this one you cannot use this one so you have to use one more that is six okay so it will be four so one one zero and then you can see you, you can write it like this two zero and six now see the relationship what is this uh zero zero one zero zero one means this one what is the what is the color value is four 
in case of encoded value, it is four. Four means, sorry, in in case of encoded, in case of order encoded, it is one. So one means red. Okay, so red comes first. So it has red comes first. Red comes first. So it gives one one zero zero one. So this I am copying just for the simplicity. Uh, I am copying this piece of code and bringing it down here. Okay. Now Now red comes first, so red has 0, 0, 1. So this is equal to red. Next, black. So 2 is equal to black. So where you have black? So 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 0. This is equal to black. Next is pink. So 0, 1, 1. So 3 is equal to ping then 4 is equal to uh, blue 5 is equal to green and 6 is equal to anything missed red black pink blue green so i don't need this okay now see where you have blue, that means last column, last row, and the third last row. That means this one. So this one and this one. Where you have the same value, see? 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0. We have another one, 1, 0, 0. Is it clear? This one, this one, and this one. Is it clear? Yes, yes. Okay, any doubt regarding this? No, now it's clear. Okay. So now coming to the last example, if you allow me to continue, it's uh, already 10 minutes late. So if you allow, I will continue to the target variable, last one, and then we'll finish it. Shall I continue? Okay, sir. Or I will cover it in the next class. Okay. Uh, so let's continue. Uh, maybe five minutes more. So here, what I have to do, I have to use, uh, um, say, let's use one data set. Okay, the temporary field. So copy this and paste it. Remember the example I have shown you or explained for the target. You have a categorical variable country representing the country of each customer. So you have some customers and their country and their purchase. Okay. So you want to target and code this country, this country attribute based on the purchase rate for each country. Okay. Based on the purchase rate for each country. So what you have to do in this case. So now write. A data frame uh, country underscore data frame is equal pd dot data frame data and then uh, use you have to calculate the mean purchase rate based on the purchase attribute. Okay. 
so df use the use the country data frame and group them group them based on the country because you want to uh, categorize this one based on this you group them and which one to group that is purchase purchase come okay let it run maybe it will come okay then mean and then it is two underscore dict so canada us canada us canada us okay so you have uh, this result the mean value of this and you store it into a mean like this okay and print mean now use this mean to map to map so for this what you have to do you have to use the same process of mapping same process of mapping this one here it is your uh, country data frame country data frame ordered encoded country it's not what ordered Zero point six. the values for Canada and USA? Yes. Let's check what it will give you the output. Okay. So target. Target encoded country. And uh, country DF. Where you have which one? The country. The country and the map is the mean. The mean. So it is not a good example, although because everywhere it will assign six 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 six. So um, I think you have identified this issue, maybe. So. print country df and see here you want to target encode that means you want to create the new variable based on the purchase rate for each country and what is the purchase rate that is uh, you can generate by using the mean to dict and then this dictionary value will be used as a mapping remember this mapping here i have used i have created a map in case of ordinal encoding manually i have created it and here the statistical calculation have been done and created it and performed and created a new new encoded attribute of this country where instead of usa canada usa canada you apply all these 666 so how many say for one, two, three, four, five? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So what I can do, I just want to delete it. So one, two, three, four, one, two. Let's check this one. Oh, sorry, this one. Indeed. So how many values? Six. Yes, yes. 
So this one. So see, for Canada, it will be one, and for US, it will be five. Now I apply this and print it. You mean it's the average value? You mean it's the average? Uh, Canada, one, two out of six. Uh, no, let me check the how it generates this dictionary in this group by. It groups US, so it groups Canada, Canada 2, so second and fourth, this one and this one. Two times it is one. So then it creates a mean that is one. And here, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one. So that is four out of two. So two out of four, you have one. So that means it is. 50%. That's it's a mean of based on the country. Purchase mean based on the country. Group by the country. Is clear? Yes or no? Here in I have I have two groups, US and Canada. For US, what are the purchase or purchase rate? One. And then the third uh, one, this zero. And then the fifth and sixth, that is zero and one. So all together, zero, one plus zero plus zero plus one. Right? So two. And how many values you have? Four. So two by four, that is 0 0.5. And in case of Canada, how many values you have? In first appearance, we have one. Second appearance, we have one. So every time you have one. one. So two times one, one. So two by two, it's one, 1.0. Mm -hmm. Calculate the mean based on the group okay. of the country okay mm. okay and now instead of this okay. new, new categorical attribute you have this new target attribute now oh, perfect perfect okay so Yeah, if you have any query or if you have any kind of particular requirement that if you are from statistics, some of you are from statistics background, 